Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm going to take a look at something called Starhammer, the Vanguard Prophecy, which is ostensibly a sequel to Starhammer Tactics, a little-known game which uh, is available on Desura, so good luck buying it. Oh, just kidding. Uh, it's also on iOS, but this is a wholly much more advanced game here. So let's actually just start a new campaign I'm going to show you. I'm going to play it on easy because I'm terrible at these games. Mostly I just want to cover how the gameplay works. In the 22nd century, we left a dying earth so that a fortunate few could settle an unspoiled frontier home. Their journey to Gleesa 581D took 146 old earth years. Now, wait a second, I'm trying to figure out, like, Gleesa, that would be like a 66 days, so... 800, 800 Gleesa 581D years, there you go. And was called Novus by the time we made landfall. Scion corporations became ministries, wilderness was cultivated and irrigated, and the dreams of a, few, a new coalition were fresh and vibrant, like this music. In time we would learn that life in a frontier colony is neither prosperous nor peaceful. We were unprepared for the Nautilid, as they too were unprepared for us. The conflict was messy, chaotic, and ultimately ended through the determination of individuals, and not armies. And I'm guessing the Nautilid are these things here, that are all like living things in space, whereas these are you know, spaceships with living things inside of them, presumably. And, 14 years later, our leaders remain politically entangled and unable to see the threats that linger both afar and within our own walls. War heroes have become politicians, conspiracies find traction in a fractured population, and already the losses of 14 years ago are forgotten by a new generation. Yeah, I mean, like, 14 years ago, who remembers anything from 14 years ago? Like, you know, 14 years ago, there was this record called uh, Sandstorm by some guy called Darude. Nobody remembers that these days. Anyway, this is the personal log of Lieutenant Valerian Dice, Cass Class 37. The re this recording is personal and off the record. Nine days ago, I was certain of two things. One, I was late to my rendezvous with NSG-7. This was going to be another mark on my already flagging performance report with Commander Tension. Com yes, the bit of tension with this guy, huh? Competing with Golden Boy Dale Lu for Tension's commendation was going to be a hard sell no matter which way it went. But I was not making the fight any easier for myself. Two, my gut was telling me something was off, even before we had deployed. At the time, I thought it was just Haven's sour face putting me off. I should have trusted that feeling. All but for hindsight, huh? I've gone over and over these vid feeds of the battles. Liberty 2 didn't need our help against those swordfishes early on, so what went wrong? I'm not going to back, uh, back over this vid feed of the training exercises again. See if there's anything I'm missing. Nine days ago, everything starts to go wrong. Objectives, complete the search and rescue training mission. Okay, and we get these spaceships again, which look cool. Nine days ago, in the past, which we have long forgotten. I don't even remember what was number one nine days ago. Move Valeron's flagship to the waypoint. So this is the waypoint, and these are my different flagships here. It says click to dismiss. So it says proceed, proceed to the next button. Great. So, no. Okay, why am I not able to click, click, click? Done. Oh, done, because there's a window, the done button there. Hidden. Lieutenant Dice, I'm so glad you decided to roll out of bed and join us. So, apologies, sir, we had issues with one of the swordfish's thrusters. The enemy will not wait for your alarm clock, Lieutenant. Captain Lou is already out at the next hotspot, practicing artillery with his crew. crew. Uh, about that, sir. You, however, have to take our strike group within SNR range of that busted utility before you get us to play for, with the real toys. Lieutenant Darrybridge, make sure the captain in training knows where to go. Okay, so I have to go places, and it's a turn-based a turn-based game, so you can drag all this around. And it tells us nav points have already been uploaded. This guy's called Ludo. My comms officer says you've already got your mission coordinates. So you can... You know, adjust your energy and stuff here. So I'm going to go for full engines because I want to make a good impression and get there fast. Uh, these guys, they should probably also do full engines. You see that? They can move, uh, drag, drag like this. 
And he's shouting orders at me. Now, it's telling me about this. And I can change the active ship's pitch. That's very useful. And then there's a weapon arc toggles and overlay that displays the ranges and firing arcs of the ship's active weapons. So you can see where these things have weapon systems. Like that one. You can fire in front and back, but it is sorely losing in, the, or sorely deficient in the broadside department. Not be calling on a full broadside here. Okay, full engines for this one. This is gonna get out there. Now, what they were also saying was these things can go in the vertical, right? So I can make this one dive, dive. You see that? So it can go down super low, whereas these ones can fly along above. I guess I'll like split them into three levels just to confuse the enemy. Now I actually have control of all the ships here, so I can take this one and you know, make it turn around that way, I guess. Um, hopefully that won't get it crashing into anything. I can't make it go down, but I can make it go up. And I don't have any controls over its power. And this is Hammerhead, the Liberty Destroyer, so I guess I'm going to do that as well. Full engines for it, because let's get over there quickly to make a good impression. This thing has broadside, you see. Okay, so that one... Uh, yeah, why not make its plane go up? See that? So it's gonna. So we have 3D here. It's all in layers. The, the mobile game, or sorry, Star Hammer Tactics, doesn't really do the multiple level thing. And then once you're set up, you press return, and you can watch your spacecraft fly their courses, obeying your orders and making you feel like you're really in control of the situation. Okay, you are going this way. You are going this way. I'm getting you in range ASAP. These guys are just going to continue, 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 and then hit return, and we can watch them fly. And of course, you can zoom right in and watch these spacecraft. They're not the most amazingly detailed models, but they're certainly quite practical. It tells us there's also camera modes on top here, so I can actually... Oh, it's also got telling me about selecting ships. You see, I can select the different ships and see what they look like. These are my raiders, and that's another raider, and that's my, what is that, it's a corvette. That's my dude there, and this is the Liberty, whatever that is, is that a frigate? Uh, oh, it's a destroyer, okay, not bad. And yeah, you have like tactical views, you have top-down views, side views, all these fixed angle views. They're all pretty interesting and useful, I'm just going to use the free view mostly because that is the most amenable to a cinematic experience, I'm sure you'll realize. Okay, moving these guys up. Moving these guys along. Just keep going. We're going to get to our position as quickly as possible. And these guys are coming this way. And off we go. Oh, look. He even does shadowing on those asteroids, which is pretty neat. Or rather, totally expected, I guess, if you're into graphics. Oh no! Engage and eliminate the hostile ships. It looks like we have some hostile raiders here. Okay. The panel of buttons is used to give commands. So basically this is where you can tell it whether you're going to set up repairs or, or all that. You, have, you can ram the enemies. That is a legitimate option. Although ramming enemies can frequently happen purely by accident. You can of course tell them to off fire at random targets. Auto fire is relatively good, but sometimes you want to concentrate fire. Actually, frequently you want to concentrate fire, but uh, okay, I'm going to move that this way, and I want this thing to get out of here, so because I don't want it to be subject to the attentions of those bad guys. But I'm going to turn this this way totally because I want to make sure that this thing gets some attention. This will definitely have to turn hard because we want it coming over this way. Oh, and you know what? Should probably just reset their power because we don't want them, you know, getting into combat and having to. Oh, wait a second. Should I do that? Yeah, I'll do that. Get around in here to make sure we form a defensive perimeter around our secret, our, our ships. You know, balanced. These ones will go straight on ahead, right? Balance. There we go. Now this one, yes, this one has missiles and you can actually launch missiles at the target. So I'm going to set that to happen. And we can watch this turn un... Well, 
happen as we watch. Ooh, yeah. Oh, no, this died, even despite my best efforts to get there. It has not handled the situation well. Oh, well. I guess I could just stop completely and turn on full weapons. Where's this? Now this one can go under there, right? Yeah. Maybe that should do full weapons as well. And these guys, because these have firepower on the front. Full weapons! Full weapons! Pull back now, Lieutenant! I want you. I, want to, I don't want to have to explain to the Vice Admiral that his daughter, etc., etc., etc. Why his daughter was shot down during an inert training mission. This is supposed to be a girl, by the way. That's your main character. There's a whole story going on here, but honestly, I don't have the time to do all the silly voices. We apologize about breaking sanctions when we're no longer being shot at. Yes, my thoughts exactly. Let's... Uh, now, yeah, this is all telling us about energy distribution, which we already know about. We also have an action replay button as well, so you can go back and, like, replay the last turn. And it'll also tell you about how you have different shield zones as well to manage. So yeah, this is going back to the previous turn. We can watch this ship going down in flames. We can admire things from different angles. Look, there's the radar. So like, focus in on it. And then replay the turn. See that? Now we can watch these ships zipping around there as it tries to turn to engage this. And then is engaged by or encounters withering firepower from my amassed fleet. Okay. So I'm guessing this guy, or this girl, this lady, this fleet, should just start unleashing the missiles. All torpedo tubes online. Whereas this is going to make a U-turn while probably searching for, you know, searching for the uh, survivors, right? Because this is a search and rescue mission. This thing will probably do a U-turn, right? Because I'm suspecting this thing is flying that way. I'm turning this this way as well. Oh, wait a second. There is a, a bad guy here. Well, let's see what, how this happens. There's some missiles away. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. One more down. Solid accuracy from the console there, Henson. So yeah, I like these guided missiles. Since there's only a couple left, we're just going to launch all the missiles at all the targets. The music is certainly dramatic, I'll say. And you gotta be careful, by the way, because your ships can totally collide with each other. It happens... Uh, I found it happening with alarming regularity. Okay, so I got... That was certainly a perkier morning than I had planned. Let's get the story continuing. Give me a sit rep, Darry Bridge. The board is clear. Marks appear to be a couple old swordfish models. I can't ID the markings, but the navigation deck serials are standard issue. I'll have their nav point history in a couple of minutes. There's more info. Percentage of shield loss, missiles fired, damage done. So yeah, you get a plus 70 per 6. I'm guessing that's a experience. Well anyway, moving on, we get to start selecting the missions. Although to start with, we only have the one mission at a time. And there's also a crew skills option here. So you can actually assign crews to your flagship. So Haven Jinx is a new crew member who, who is not assigned. So I pick her up, drop her in there. Uh, it's very much a race of Amazons or something here. So you can also pick what way they're going to, uh, you know, how their ship, how their uh, experience is going to work, right? So, oh, she's a Navy brat. So she can either get flagship shields or flagship movement speed. I think I'm going to make her fly fast. So this adjusts your power distribution and things like that. Also, the crew will have relationships between each other. Well, I mean, not relationships. I mean, they're not going to have... Maybe they might. I haven't got that far in the story. But, you know, they're going to know each other. They're going to be best bros or best, you know, sisters or whatever. And maybe they'll work well together, or maybe they will be mortal enemies and they just can't get on, and you have to decide who works under who. Uh, that's a whole thing that I haven't really got far into, but we have the rest of the script. I can't tell if I'm supposed to be shaking or smiling. 
Both are forgivable by me. We survived a live ambush during what should have been an inert training run. This is not what I was expecting from my first deployment, sir. It's been 12 years since a naval ship was sunk in active duty. I don't think anyone was expecting this. Who were those muckers? What did they think they gained by attacking a naval group? I have no idea. I'm going to leave that to tension and NAVSEC to figure out, and instead savour the remaining time in this corvette before naval command landlocks me for endangerment. Ah yes, apparently she's worried about, you know, things. Sounds good to me, sir. Ah, oh, I keep closing this when I should just click. There we go. Okay, moving on. Let's select the next one. Two hours later and technically over the dateline, we reached the abandoned coal attendant processing orbital that Dale was using for target practice. Poor Mucker wasn't to know they'd been hiding there all along. They thought he had come for them and took no time in peppering his Nemo with holes. We got there just in time to watch their last shots rip through his hulls. For all his smarts, Dale Lu was never one to know when he was outmatched. My timeline is correct. Soon after this is the time tension hits trouble, two clicks back at our first engagement point. If we'd stayed with NSG-7, maybe the Liberty would still be afloat, but then we'd never have found out what happened to Dale. It's all recorded here, right from when we first made visuals with Finnegan Station. Rest in peace, Dale. Eight days ago, and the worst was yet to come. So my objective is to find this guy and escort him to safety, but since the mission description is told in retrospect, we pretty much know this isn't going to be possible. So. Some people are like, oh, it's an escort mission, but hey, we know that we failed this one, right? Proceed! So, it's telling us that we can prepare our fleet and add and remove ships, right? So, you know, you can set up your formation. I can have these guys sitting back, or maybe I want them flying alongside me. That might be a little better. There we go, see that? And I can move them up and down as well. Right, so for example, maybe these guys are on a slightly lower level, so I can feel like superior standing up above them. Now I've also got some uh, points. Points I can spend on spacecraft. The only spacecraft I have available are the Raiders. I could request one of those and that will be added to my fleet. But not in this mission, in the next mission, or at least after this mission. So I'm going to do this now because having more firepower, always a useful thing. Okay, eight days ago. We get the same flying in sideways cutscene or whatever. And intercept Com Lieutenant Lou's attackers. I have visuals on Lieutenant Lou's com Corvette, sir. There's live marks ahead of him. More painted swordfish like before. Lieutenant Lou, get out of there! Do you read, Dale? No reply, sir. His comments have zeroed out. No! That's this guy. This is Nemo. So I can actually fly him. I'm not sure if there's anything I can actually do. I mean, I guess I could turn him like this way and put all power to shields. Yeah. Oh, look. Wait. Full shields. There we go. Turn. I don't think that's going to help. What, what's his firing arcs? Yeah, they're all kind of lousy. Well, it'd be nice if I could just reverse, right? But no, I have to actually turn. Uh, and his repair bots are all... The repair bots are offline. Oh, he could fire some missiles. Let's do that. Extra missiles will always be good. There, load all tubes and set attack. Meanwhile, I'm going to have to close range. Perhaps I can get to him in time? Of course I can. That would be some sort of temporal glitch if I was able to get there before he uh, kicks the but but bucket. Kicks his buttocks. No, man. Wrong, wrong expression there. We're going to kick their buttocks eventually. But we have to get in range first. Oh, I should have launched some missiles. Look, he's got missiles away, though. No! But at least he took one of them out at the last minute. Looks like we don't have time to I'll go hunting for the brat when she rocks up at our doorstep. Dale, do you read? No! Okay. So, you guys go this way. And yeah, just keep this. Actually, I wonder, what are the range on these missiles? Should I launch? I think I'm going to launch. A, oh, wait a second. Yeah, I'll launch one from this range and see if that helps. Missiles away. And... Come on! Okay, now. It's, it tells us about miss, The game tells us about missiles now, but I know all about that. Full weapons! 
All power to weapons! All power to weapons. And we're gonna... I, I think I want to move these guys up to the same level as me. And I'm gonna bring them around so that their firing arcs are more consistent with the bad guys. I'm gonna slow down a bit. There we go. I think this might work. And I guess I could actually fire another missile, right? So let's... Uh, next... There we go. Okay. Missiles away. Missiles out. Oh, we missed with that first missile. But that one took him down. That was short and sweet. Commander, the marks are down. Nav point is clear of further hostiles. What about Roo? He's always shouting, this guy. Roll about Roo! There's something. I'm too tense. I'm Captain Tension. He didn't make it, sir. Anything on your end? Some resistance. The little muckrakers took us by surprise with an IED. Look, dice, Derry Bridge. Talked for a couple of them. They kept getting off shouting about your dad. Oh, Finnegan. What is that? Now, Finnegan isn't a character. Finnegan is their generic um, F word, basically. Weapons live. I want those things out of the sky now. Divert whatever you got to starboard and prepare for a collision. We're under fire. Get back and we'll steamroll whatever this is. Pull up the Liberty's cords and set nap balls. We're giving tension his fleet back. We expect me to leave him to sink. No, we're gonna go and disobey orders and get him back. Yeah! But we got some reinforcements, thankfully. Rrrrlet. Arlet. Bice Waller. Okay. So can I uh, look at crew skills? Yeah, nothing, nothing to do here. They haven't learned enough to, to matter. Okay, done. So this is my mission here. The last of our recorded vid speeds. This stage, my console was running hot with pings from command and now sec, ordering me, ba me back to DM2, all of which Haven and I were happy to ignore at the time. Don't even know how I'm going over these. Tensions Memorial is in six days. So I guess he dies as well, right? Thanks. <laughs> I think I was hoping for some sort of closure, some sort of evidence, but watching Dale's ship sink, just, I don't know. Maybe I'm hoping this time it will load up and the squids won't be there hammering the Liberty to pieces. Just Finnegan. Dad was supposed to have cleared the Nautilid out of Novan airspace 14 years ago. Why were they there? Why doesn't anyone believe us, despite this Finnegan mucking vid feet right here? But even the old man is returning my calls now. Eight days a corvette captain and already I'm a pariah. I guess this is what happens when your strike group commander sinks just out of your reach. So, yeah, um, I'm supposed to save this guy, but it's not happening. Um, so, so, I think I have not enough command points. That's the only thing. So, while I've got this as a reinforcement, it won't let me deploy it because I don't have enough skills just yet. Still, good to know that it's there. Uh, I'm going to proceed. And we're going to talk about this. It mentions something called war scale. Basically, depending how you fight, you either get defensive or offensive war scale. And that will adjust what missions are available to you. Okay. I don't think that's a ship. Oh, look. Incoming marks. I don't recognize the ship's chassis. I don't think that's a ship. Weapons live, Ensign. Dice, I told you to break for home. Ah! I've already had two attempts in my life today, sir. A third could be argued as a statistical non-event. Mass is worse than your tiny dice, but I'll take all the help I can get. Ah! He's just like, is completely angry all the time. Okay. What says firing arcs? Yeah, he does that. So if I turn. Uh, he doesn't have. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna turn. Can he do that, maybe? Yeah, I'll do that. I'm gonna turn him sideways. Do full shields. That's what I'm gonna do. Full shields. Is there anything that he's got? Doesn't have repairs. He doesn't have RAM. Okay, well, that's him. Now, my team, I'm gonna try and move them within range because I would like to rewrite history, truthfully. Full engines! See if we can get out this way quickly. Maybe I should just give him full speed and do that instead. Full engines! Go this way, uh, really fast. Yeah, this one can actually fly over the top. And again, full engines. 
but while we're doing this, we might actually be able to shoot at some enemies, right? And also, my ship might as well start firing a missile, since of one of these here. Yeah, maybe maybe shields is the best, not the good option. He's only at 17% hull. Oh, and he's got no shields, so no shields are going to help us, right? So I need full engines. Go on, be nimble, be quick. Perform the GTFO maneuver. And he could go up a little. Not really going to help him much. You never know, maybe there's some way to save him yet. I'm not going to give up. Yes, keep shooting. No! Get out of there! Oh, gross, that's not a ship. It's a Nautilid. What? The Nautilid's gone, your dad killed them all. Never trust a dice to clean up their own mess. Fire at will and don't let any of these things get away. End of transmission. Okay, this thing is still going. Um... I guess if it goes this way, then... I guess it could go that way and then it'll at least put some of these things in its firing arc and then, uh, yeah. Raise my thing one more time. These guys go a little faster. And then, of course, launch a missile. We've got one krill there. Da 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 da! Yeah, I'll just fire it at that. Why not? This is super, super energetic music. Why not? Just let's let's see if we can get close to him. You never know. It'd be nice if I could actually get him in a firing arc or a firing solution. It's that going, and they're taking fire. Come on! We're here to rescue you! No! A fire ship! A boat! Look, he's su suddenly he looks appropriate. Like, he's, he's shouting. I can't carry you all out here, Derbridge! Get out! Well, there's still a pod left! A boat ship! A boat Abandon the finicking ship! I'm sorry, that just makes me laugh. Clear this space so the SNR teams can pick up my crew. We can get you out. Stay Razor out here, Dice. I don't know these squids, but those raiders were gunning for you. Ludo! Ludo, are you still there? Nothing from the comms. Lieutenant Darry Bridge must have evacuated. Finnegan! Clear all marks, Strike Coot. I want the nav point cleared of every hostile mark before SNR boats, boats make visual range. Okay, so I guess this one's dead. Ah, destroyer has been destroyed. So, let's go, let's uh, switch to a balanced weapons output and we'll start, start trying to figure out how to deal with these guys. Oh, we could go this way or we could go that way. Since we're going this way, we might as well keep going this way. But you know, if I turn that way, then the rear firing arc should pick up those ships. These ones, I'm going to slow down. Balanced. Balanced weapons loadout, or balanced weapons power thing. Looks like we have taken down one. This one's dead, right? Yes, excellent. I'm going to fire off another one of my missiles. Hopefully at some point I get another one back. Now the, now the action continues and we get to see the volleys of fire shooting everywhere. Oh, I hope my hope my little radar doesn't crash into these guys. So... This one... Okay, so you've got to deal with firing arcs and all this, right? And this one is unable to fire on these bad guys because the firing arcs are all wrong. But if it goes this way and goes up, and I guess it could use its last missile on some target somewhere. Just pick one of these... Okay, look, at this point, you get the idea. The bad guys have come back, or the aliens, or whatever, have come back. And you now get to find, fight them in fully 3D turn-based combat. Uh, the game is Starhammer the Vanguard Prophecy. It's by Black Lab, published by Slytherin and Matrix. You can get it on Steam, of course. And that's uh, 20 bucks for it. I mean, it's not the most amazing strategy game ever, but it's actually a, certainly a solid option if you want to control fl small fleets of spaceships. 
lots of interesting little missions and uh, strategies. Although a lot of the weapons fire does kind of look like, a, you know, My Little Pony rainbows tears flying around through space. But truthfully, this is exactly what many people want, and there are many, many worse things that they could spend their money on. So yeah, Starhammer the Vanguard Prophecy, I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.